Hello. Hello, microphone. Are you working today? Oh, hooray. My mic is actually working. Good. Good. This was an issue. This was an issue on Sunday. <sighs> Which made things very difficult because I wasn't able to talk to anyone while I was doing this. That's too bad. But this is what I worked on on Sunday. I did the pencils for this illustration. This is a fountain outside of the Arashta Monastery in the footsteps of Hercules, which is a RPG source book from Skirmisher. We've already released it, but then we're just updating it as we get more work done. So you could buy it and then you would still get like a PDF, like in PDF, and then it's not available in print yet. Get updates with cool new illustrations as I finish them because I Skirmisher has wisely discovered that I can only draw so fast. <laughs> Way slower, in fact, than our writers can write. So that's what I'm working on today. Working on inking this illustration. A lot of it, I think, I'm probably going to end up doing pretty much all of it in pen because it's all little, like, detail-y bits. So let's start with some of the stuff that I have to use tools for. Let's scoop this slightly so I'm not banging into that clip. I like to keep this Masonite drawing board on my desk because my lovely antique drafting desk is just a little bit rough. So I'm going to get these straight lines of the Aulos, is that how you pronounce it? The double flute? It's A-U-L-O-S. Aulos? Something like that. Alright. Got those straight lines on there. Get some of these other details. This is ultimately going to be colored. Although it's carved stone, so the coloring job is going to be pretty straightforward on this one. So I now have one tiny little section, one tiny little section inked. So let's see, what can I ink that's not going to, I don't, I have plenty of stuff I need to ink right through here, but I don't want to drag my tool through the wet ink. So I've got to be very careful about where I set this so that that does not happen. Do not want to ruin the work I just did. Oh, need a little more ink. Yes, very early on in the last stream, I realized my microphone was not working, and then I just kind of awkwardly kept working in silence by myself. What's funny is that it's more awkward for me to know that I'm on camera and just not be talking than having to talk, even if nobody's necessarily really listening. Although if you are listening, hi, feel free to leave a comment or a question. I like answering questions while I work on these. Uh, let's see if I can get this big. So there's a lot of like rough, rough stone in this, but there's also a few spots where there's like more, more carved and defined edges. And that's like this right here, this edge where the wall was smoothed out for this ball relief. 
There we go. We'll use our French curve for that. I'm really not sure that it's going to take me an entire hour to ink this. It may not, in which case we'll just we'll just go until we're done. It only took me about an hour to draw it, so. The other edge of that over there. There we go. So let's see, I do have some more tool stuff I need to do, like on that basin to keep those curves nice. But I'm going to give that a little bit of time, some of these a little bit of time to dry so I'm not dragging my tools right through it. And find somewhere else on this image to work. I'm gonna work over in this corner for right now. Some of this stone texture here. There's that area. I'm gonna keep working on this side here. And before I do this lower edge, I'm gonna start working on some of these figures so that I can work my way down from there. These are all supposed to be bas relief sculptures carved into the side of the rock wall here. So I'm kind of keeping the line weights a little lighter on the top and a little heavier on the underside to like give an indication of some of that shadow or weight of them being raised figures. on my nib there.
this uh, relief, this bar relief is supposed to be showing uh, myth of Hercules getting drunk with the centaurs and then accidentally murdering some of them. Whoops, sorry. So, you know, here they're, they're like welcoming Hercules and here they're getting drunk and then here all oh, crap murder. Little like decorative shrubs to fill in some of the space. Sure. All right, so that's that side of the relief. more of this rock texture in there. Don't want to overdo it on textures in the inking phase since this is going to be colored. All right, let's see about getting some of this basin done here. Oh, that wall now is in the way. Goodness. No. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to wait on that. <laughs> oh, goodness.
I'm going to add just a little bit of texture to the floor here, or ground, I guess, here. Because I do want this to be like, we, we, I worked with, with Mike to get the composition for this and Mike's my uh, boss, question mark, colleague, uh, skirmisher. And he liked it. He liked the fountain being pushed further back in the composition, but I don't want to leave all of this just like completely blank where all of this ground is. So just adding a little bit of texture to kind of break it up a little. All right, let's see, that should be, no, that still looks kind of wet. That still looks kind of wet. Let's not, let's not go creating a disaster there. So the challenge of trying to do traditional media in the summertime is if it's humid, then it takes forever for stuff to dry. Oh, need more ink. Yeah, you know, my pen that's getting a little gunky, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that out. Give it a quick dip in water, and I'm just drying it off with paper towel. Trying to make sure you get way in there and clean it. This is like a little cleft that leads off somewhere else. A little passageway in this little passageway in this cave. Well, it's not really a cave, it's like a almost like a grotto, a little stone area kind of carved out of a bigger mountainside.
Eh, careful not to drag my hand through that ink. stabbed. Poor centaur. Poor centaur getting stabbed. That last little bit, poor dead centaur. So sad. My phone decided to take this moment to start blowing up for some reason. What? It's the deal. What are we blowing up about? All right, I think I should be able to do this lower one here without too much difficulty. It worked out all right. Yeah, let's see, what are we at? We're in 26 minutes and I'm most of the way done already. Okay, yeah, this is clearly gonna be a shorter stream. <laughs> That's all right. It's kind of just a bonus since Sunday did not go as planned. I really prefer to do these streams on like Friday or Saturday because usually people are more available to watch them. But, um, you know, life.
Okay, we're getting to the point where the only thing I have left is gonna be that fountain in the middle. Let's get the back side of that basin using my French curve to just give it a very gentle curve there. Hey, oh, thank you. Glad you enjoy it. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how this has come out. a different part of the curve to get that more sharp, that sharper little curve in there for the basin. I'll have to give that a minute to dry before I do the other side of it. Oh, I just pulled my nib right out of my holder. Get back in there. So, little eraser crumbs on there. Get off of there. So while I wait on that, I'm going to work on, let's see, this is going to need to be here-ish to get the other side of that basin, so I'll work down here. Sounds like a plan, theoretically. Oh, yes, sorry, that's probably primarily my fault, Allison, in that my schedule is not terribly predictable. <laughs> If you're missing my streams, it probably has uh, way more to do with my unpredictable schedule than anything. There we go. I'm getting these little grape leaves. And similar to when I was doing the bar reliefs here, I'm trying to keep my lines a little heavier on the underside and a little lighter on the top side to kind of emphasize the fact that it's a relief sculpture, not just like a design on the wall. Obviously this will all get, that'll all get enhanced a lot with the coloring too, but no reason to not also help it with the inking. Like so. And I'm trying to get these little grapes overlapping so that they actually look like a bunch of grapes and uh, not just a bunch of random circles all smooshed together. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you guys could hear that or not. I just heard one of our roosters crowing. One of our roosters. Several of our little cute baby bantam chicks ended up being roosters. We have five bantams and I think three of them are roosters. Oh, correction. We had five bantams up until last night. Now I'm pretty sure we have four bantams because one of them refused to go in the coop. And uh, I found a pile of feathers this morning. So I think uh, she has been eaten. We tried really hard to get her to go back inside so she wouldn't be eaten, but she refused. Couldn't catch her. Ran away every time we tried to scoop her up or herd her toward the door.
So, yep, yep. Fox definitely there. We have a whole family of foxes that live here. They just, we'll see them just like waltzing right through the yard and they definitely have eaten their fair share of chickens. All right, get the other side. Other side of that basin. There we go. All right, so that's, that should be all the stuff I need the tools for. I'm really not gonna use it on the front edge of the basin because of that little like leaf detail. I'm gonna come back up further on here so I can just work down the rest of the way without smearing all through. Yeah, it, it, it is what they do. I don't really blame the foxes for doing what they do. It's just, it's just frustrating. <laughs> Because, you know, I, we want the chickens to be able to get out and eat the bugs off our lawn. That's part of why we have them. And if they're going to be obstinate and refuse to go in the coop at night, then they're going to get eaten. <laughs> That's their foolish choice, I guess. I can only do so much. This little, uh, no, this is actually, this one's not for the comic. Um, I'm actually at a point in the current chapter on the comic where I can't really show any of the pages because it's just, it's like the, it's the last little bit of the chapter and it's all just too spoilery. Um, any, anything that you would see going on is like, like just the, the mere fact that these particular characters are on this page together. <laughs> is itself kind of spoilery at the point that I'm at. So uh, so I'm not going to be working on Age of Night pages for a little bit on the streams until I get past to the end of this chapter, basically, which I'm very close to, but it'll probably still be a couple more weeks. Um, so I'm working on some of my freelance work. This is for Skirmisher Publishing. This is for their... Uh, source book, adventure source book in the footsteps of Hercules, which is published as system agnostic. You could use it for any RPG system. We've also been playtesting it specifically for fifth edition D and D. It adapts pretty well into that, but you could use it for pretty much whatever you wanted to. So it basically just gives you like the different, the different stops and possible encounters along this pilgrimage that your characters can take in like a fantasy version of ancient Greece that follows uh, different locations from the trials of Hercules. So this is at the Arashta Monastery. So this is the illustration for that location. And this is a magical fountain. That one side of the fountain, uh, one side of the Olos, if that's how you pronounce that, uh, one side of the flute thing there, I think it's pronounced Olos, is 
it distributes water and one side distributes wine. So you can get wine from a fountain right in the wall, which is apparently a real thing. And sounds like it would be pretty sweet. But this one's magic. Brush is getting, you know, my pen's getting all gunky in there. <laughs> magic wall wine. Yes, I, I would love some magic wall wine. That would be great. For now, I will just stick with my iced coffee. Why, why is spam calling my phone? Leave me alone. Little stone satyr face in the fountain here. There we go. Oh, there's something on the tip of my pen. I've got like a picked up a piece of paper fiber or something. Yes, I, I uh, usually need iced coffee or regular coffee sometime in the afternoon, and we're having a heat wave in the Northeast, so it's iced coffee today. I probably drink more coffee in general than I should, but, you know, it's just kind of what happens. What happens when you have children, I think. <laughs> I don't think I drank anywhere near this much coffee before I had kids. I'd still have some coffee, but now it's like, no, must, ab absolute mu absolutely must. I was one of those weirdos who didn't start drinking coffee until I was like in my 20s. Because I thought it was gross, which I find kind of hilarious now. Now I can't even conceive of finding coffee gross.
make a bit of vine down there. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. For years and years and years, I never really drank coffee. What started me on it was working. Um, I worked at a 24-hour convenience store. And that in itself didn't want get me to want to drink coffee because I made so much of it. And I always smelled it. And so that didn't make it terribly appealing. But then I started, I started working. Um, I would cover third shift sometimes. So that was the overnight shift. And then I would also have to come in at like five in the morning and do the books for the day. And man, having to come in at five in the morning, <laughs> that's when I basically gave in. I was like, all right, this is, I need, I need some help here. That's what started me on it. I think it's funny. I got like all the way through art school, pulling all nighters, staying up real late, working on stuff, hardly getting any sleep, balancing that with work. Never really drank coffee. It wasn't until after I graduated I started drinking coffee. Yeah, I, th I went through that phase too of like, I liked coffee flavored things like um, coffee ice cream and that sort of thing. Long before I ever drank it. I still love all those things though. Now I'm just like, and also coffee. All right, I am just about done here. This did not take me very long to ink like I thought. Yeah, about 45 minutes. So not quite an entire hour by the time I'm done here. But I'm very close to done, so I'll start telling you guys the things. I'm Amanda Call. This is my YouTube channel, and if you like it, you should like this video. You should subscribe so that you can see more of them. I go live and share my process work at least once a week on average, sometimes more. This is the second time this week. We'll see how the rest of this week shakes out. I'm working on a piece for Skirmisher Publishing called In the Footsteps of Hercules. I'm working on an illustration for that, that source book, which you can find on their website, Skirmisher Publishing. SkirmisherPublishing.com? Skirmisher, dang it, I don't know. I'll put the link in the thing. I don't remember. I'll put the link in. Um, and you should also like my comic, ageofnight.com which is what I'm usually working on on these streams when I'm not at a spoilery point in the story. And you can find me on Twitter at Age of Night and Instagram at Amanda Colbert. So yeah, check out all the things. Um, and that is pretty much gonna be it. So at the beginning of this stream, this was just pencils. Now it is completely inked and ready for me to scan in, clean up and color. So that'll be fun. And I will see you guys all another time. Thank you so much. Bye.